In this lesson, we will learn how to construct confidence intervals for the population mean using the T distribution. A certain brokerage house wants to estimate the mean daily return on a certain stock. A random sample of 15 days yields the following return percentages. 0 0.38, negative 1.07, 2.23, 1.97, negative 2.77, 2.54, 2.93, negative 1.95, 2.98, negative 1.46, 2.07, negative 2.67, negative 0 0.47, 1.9, negative 2.05. If we assume that the returns are normally distributed, find a 95% confidence interval for the mean daily return on this stock. Then complete the table below. Carry the intermediate computations to at least three decimal places and round your answers to one decimal place. First, I recommend that we always get a visual for the information provided for us. I would like to build 95% confidence interval using T distribution. The reason why we're using T distribution and not Z distribution is that we don't know the population standard deviation sigma. Anytime you don't have that information and you can only obtain standard deviation for the sample, which we typically indicate by letter S, you probably will be looking into a T distribution at this point. Another thing that I notice is that I'm not given a summary of um, the information in this random sample. I am actually given the raw data in this sample of 15 days. So I will have to use this data to extract the information I need to proceed with the solving process. So my visual, 95% of data will be in the middle. 5% will have to be split equally between two tails, which means there's 2.5% in the left tail and 2.5% in the right tail. I will need critical values t sub 0 0.025 and opposite of it that will separate 95% from the remaining 5%. To find this quantity t, which will be exact opposite of this quantity negative t, I will use inverse t and apply it to the area of 0 0.975, which is a combination of 95% and 2.5% more combined together to find this location, T sub 0 0.025, with 14 degrees of freedom. How do I know it is 14 degrees of freedom? Because sample size is 15, degrees of freedom is always N minus 1, or 15 minus 1, in this case 14. The critical value happens to be 2.1448 when rounded to four decimal places. My formula for computing this T interval looks very similar to the formula for Z interval. My true mean will be estimated by taking my point estimate sample mean X and subtracting on the left side and adding on the right side the margin of error, which is computed by multiplying critical value into the standard error, which is found by standard deviation divided by square root of sample size. Well, I need these quantities. I already know T value. I just computed it to be 2.1448. But what is S and what is X bar? I don't know yet. So how do I do this? Well, we have learned in the past how to compute the mean given data and a standard deviation. You can use a calculator for that or do it manually using the formulas we discussed in the past. I'm not going through that. I'm just going to record what the results would be if we round them to four decimal places. Please notice again that we must carry intermediate computations to at least three places. I went with four places in most cases to be, well, more precise, you could say. So sample mean came out to be 0 0.0067 for this data set. Uh, sample standard deviation S happened to be 2.1895 and sample size, of course, is 15. That is enough information for me to compute this interval. My point estimate X bar is 0 0.0067. 
subtract critical value 2.1448 multiplied into sample standard deviation 2.1895 divided by square root of sample size 15. On the other side, use the same numbers except add this margin of error. And once you compute these using calculator, you will get mu anywhere between negative 1.2058 and 1.2195. I rounded to four decimal places to begin with, but your final answer should be rounded to one decimal place. So I uh, trim it a bit more and it gives me negative 1.2 and 1.2 mu is anywhere between these two values therefore we can be 99 percent confident that the mean daily return on this stock is between negative 1.2 percent and 1.2 percent now i would like to demonstrate how to solve this problem using ti-84 because i have a list of data i need to enter it into the calculator first and then we can use the function of the calculator we have to do a quick computation for the interval. So let's see how that works. Remember that to enter data you go to stat, edit, and uh, I already did this but you would enter one item at a time into your list, whichever list you choose. Then we're going to go to stat and tests and choose T interval which is option 8. So click 8 and it will take you there. You need to choose between data and stat because we have raw data, choose data option and tell us where the data is stored. Frequency will be one unless you use another list and that is not the case in this case. Uh, enter your confidence level, in this case 0 0.95 and press enter a few times and here's your interval. Don't forget to round it to, two, uh, to one decimal place. And as you can see, my sample mean and sample standard deviation and sample size are all provided for me um, if I need that information. So with TI-84, it is very easy to construct intervals with the given data. Um, there is really not much manual labor except entering data into the list. Let's do another example. Suppose that a random sample of 13 adults has a mean score of 62 on a standardized personality test with a standard deviation of 6. A higher score indicates a more personable participant. If we assume that scores on this test are normally distributed, find a 99% confidence interval for the mean score of all takers of this test, then complete the table below. Carry your intermediate computations to at least three decimal places and round your answers to one decimal place. If you have to use manual approach to computing this uh, confidence interval, the process will be identical to the one I showed you with the previous example, except you already know sample size 13 sample mean of 62 and standard deviation of 6. You don't have to use list and do any other work to compute these numbers. They're already available. All you need to do, enter that information into your compound inequality that uh, finds you the interval. Uh, you will have to compute the critical value T based on your confidence level. I would like to demonstrate how it's done on a calculator when we don't have a list but have information summarized for us already. It is very easy to do, so let me demonstrate what happens. I enter stat, go to test, and choose option 8, T interval. I don't deal with data this time, I have stats, so choose that option and enter your sample mean of 62. As you can see, my Calculator still remembers information from previous examples. So I enter 62 for X bar, 6 for standard deviations, sample size 13, confidence level 0 0.99. Press enter, you got your interval. That's all you need to do. Round to one decimal place, and we get 56.9 to 67.1. We can conclude that we are 99% confident that the mean score of all takers of this test is between 56.9 and 67.1 points. 
I would like to mention something else. How do we know that we must use T distribution or T interval instead of Z distribution and Z interval on our calculator? Well, there are a few things that give me a hint that Z cannot be used. First of all, I do not know population standard deviation sigma. I only know S. That's the very first indicator that T distribution can be used and Z cannot. I also know that uh, we can assume normality of uh, the scores. So scores are normally distributed. That's very important for T uh, distribution. Um, and of course, sample size is small. With Z distributions, you gotta have a larger sample size. So all of the things we work with here hint at T, not Z. So we must stick with T distribution in this case.